Mr. Smith goes to Washington, where it takes a rocket hat for all the must be done. Mr. Smith goes to Washington, walking straight from problems and the tall. Oh, he's just a country boy, but he gets a lot of joy. Finding ways of fixing things that need a helping hand. His ways are kind of plain, but they're just as right as rain. Simple ways that honest people understand. Mr. Smith is the people's choice. Answer in with action when he hears the people's voice. When your cause is a righteous one, call on Mr. Smith in Washington. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington is brought to you by... Camel. Boy, am I tired. I haven't been so tuckered out since Hogan's old bull chased me into the next county. <laughs> the bull should have waited. He'd find me easy pickings now. I'm a little tired myself. I just hope the ambassador didn't mind our leaving the reception so early. Well, honey, 10 o'clock isn't early. This time back home, you walk down Main Street and you can barely hear the crickets for the snoring. You've come a long way from home, Senator. And I feel like I've walked every inch of it. I don't mind doing this once in a while, but Sunday night it was a dinner for the new justice, and last night it was a majority leader's annual party. I'm getting more aware of this dinner jacket than I am my pajamas. Of course, dear. Can I get you something? Coffee, tea, or oxygen? Just a glass of milk. Okay. I'm just going to sit here till I get enough strength to tackle those stairs to the bedroom. Boy, I'm going to take it easy tomorrow night. I hate to spoil your plans, dear, but tomorrow night is the Brazilian legation. Doggone it. I wonder sometime if I was elected to represent my people in Congress or at the buffet table. <laughs> Senator, you don't look very senatorial. Well, don't you worry, honey. I'm just going to stick my head out the door and say, go away. <laughs> Gene Smith, you old son of a gun. Well, Katie McGraw dipped me in breadcrumbs and fry me for a catfish. <laughs> <Katie>! <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me have a look at you. Oh, well, not too good a look. You know, it's been ten years. Of course, I was only five at the time. Well, honey, you still look as good to me as a hot bowl of hominy grits on a frosty morning. What are we standing here for? Come on in. Beat me. <laughs> well, doggone it, Katie, it sure is good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you, Gene. Say, how are things going with you? Just great. Say, you know, I'd like for you to meet my wife. Uh, oh, Pat, uh, I'd like for you to know Katie McGraw, a real old friend of mine. Very happy to know you. Hi, Pat. Hey, ain't she a looker? Gene, you old sodbuster, how did you come to land to mess a woman like her? Oh, I just kept throwing them back till I hooked the right one. <laughs> you sure snagged the limit. <laughs> That's very sweet, Miss McGraw. Oh, now, honey, you just call me Katie. Well, uh, can I take your coat, Katie? No, don't you trouble yourself. I'll just toss it over here. <laughs> After what them little critters have been through, they're past complaint. Uh, uh, sit down, Katie. Uh, well, I don't mind if I do. How long have you been in Washington? A couple of days. I would have come over sooner, but uh, I was kind of... Well, you know, you being a big senator and all, I kind of figured that maybe you might be a little busy. Katie, the address may be Washington, D.C., but old Gene Smith is still RFD. <laughs> yeah. You know, Pat, back in Chickasha, if they ever saw Gene in a whole suit, everybody in town would go look at the counter to see if it was Easter Sunday. <laughs> Now listen, Katie, you'd better lay off or I'll tell them about you wearing sack dresses long before Paris ever heard of them. And I mean flower sack. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's good to see folks like you here in Washington. You know, when I first got off that plane the other day, I've got to admit, I was a mite uh, nervous. Can you imagine me being nervous? Well, Washington and exactly Chickasha, but you're staying on? Well, I didn't buy me an 18-room house just to check my bags. House? Where? It's on, um... It's... Oh, wait a minute. I've got the bill of sale here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. I'm moving in tomorrow. Say, that's a pretty fancy neighborhood. 
Yeah, I hear that the, the trash collectors wear striped pants and spats. <laughs> Wait a minute. It wasn't always like that. When I married Sam McGraw, if we wanted to rub two nickels together, we had to borrow one of them. And that farm, <laughs> it was so full of rocks and sand that even the weeds were ashamed to come up. <laughs> and Sam, he got so disgusted one day that he went out in the front yard and he was going to put up one of those... Uh, for sale signs and he hadn't been digging out there more than two minutes when he was well he was up to here in mud and poor old Sam he's well he thought he'd hit a water pipe and when he looked down in that hole well I'm happy to say that he didn't light a match because if he had a, he'd have been about ten years ahead of them astronauts <laughs> you struck oil struck oil <laughs> honey within a month that farm of ours was so full of derricks that if you wanted to walk through them, you had to go sideways. <laughs> well, Katie, I'm, I'm real happy for you and for Sam, too. Yeah, Sam, poor Sam. Well, at least he lived long enough to enjoy part of it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Gene, how is your Uncle Cooter? Well, he's the same old honorary cantankerous scissor bill, whose nephew is proud to call him uncle. Oh, it'd be so good to see that old fella again. Well, you just go right out that door and mosey to the right until you come to the porch, and you'll see a man sitting there in a chair sound asleep, just like a baby. And if you wake him up, he'll just say yeah, he was resting his eyes. Seems like Uncle Cooter hasn't changed much either. Mm -hmm. I'll see you folks later, okay? Katie's quite a gal. She gets the full 60 minutes out of every hour. <laughs> Hello out there in Chickasha. We got a show that's a rootin' tooter. Her songs and patter and snappy chatter. It's Kate and Uncle Cooter. <laughs> oh, so howdy, friends and neighbors. Uh, this is your old friend, Uncle Cooter, and we're bringing you a... Uh, uh, Katie! Uncle Cooter! Oh, are you a sight for sore eyes? Oh, I wasn't going to wake you up, but I had to. Well, I wasn't sleeping. I just rested my eyes. Oh. Where in the world did you blow in from? Listen, I can tell you about that later. Listen, as long as we've done the first part of the show, grab that guitar and let's see if we can remember the rest oh, of it. Want to do that? Good idea. If I can remember that little vamp we used oh, to do there, I'll see if you. I can start it out here. Come here. That sounds like it. See if I can remember my part. <laughs> Howdy, folks and neighbors. <laughs> Uncle Cooter and me, we're gonna wrestle our way through one of them brand new ballads. And when we're finished, we're hoping that we're all still friends and neighbors. <laughs> if you ain't feeling in the pink, you feel better in a wink. All you've got to do is drink frisbee sassafras. <laughs> it's the best, the best there is. Buy two bottles of this fizz. Make one hers and make one his. Frisbee sassafras. <laughs> It's delicious and keeps you so contented. It's nutritious with vitamins they haven't yet invented. When you're feeling out of sorts, much too weak for indoor sports. Oh, well, grab yourself a couple of snorts of frisbee sassafras. A frisbee I think they're going through all of their old radio programs. You know, so far they've gone through Katie's solo and a duet for the kids. And the last time I was out there, Katie was giving her weekly hints to housewives on uh, how to put 15 pounds of stuffing in a 12-pound turkey without crushing the wishbone. <laughs> oh, Chickasha must have been a lot of fun. I hope Katie likes Washington. Well, I'm kind of worried about Washington liking Katie. She takes a little getting used to, you know, and... Well, she's not the kind of gal that sits quiet in the corner and waits for that. Well, you've seen her. You, you know, when she comes in, she doesn't exactly walk in. She kind of explodes. Yes, sir, that Uncle Cooter can sure get a mess of music out of that guitar. Do you know that he still remembers my key? 
Well, I, I didn't think that mattered anymore. Some of these new singers sound like they threw the key out of the window, and they ought to follow it. <laughs> Sit down, Katie. Okay. Katie, we'd like you to come to dinner Thursday night, sort of meet some of our oh, friends. Oh, honey, Thursday. I can't come Thursday. Well, as a matter of fact, neither can you. Well, that's the night that you were coming to my place. I'm uh, having my housewarming that night. Just us? Well, no, I... Uh, housewarming for three people? Well, those 18 rooms won't even start defrosting. No, I'm expecting at least a hundred. Who? Well, I'm going to have about two dozen senators and a whole slew of those cabinet members and a sprinkling of those ambassadors, uh, the allies, of course. <laughs> Katie, you don't even know those people. <laughs> they don't know me either. We'll just start out even. Now, Katie, uh, this is not like Chickasha. You just don't throw a hog on the barbecue and step out on the front porch and yell, Y'all come! <laughs> Senator, you just stop beating your gums because that's all been took care of. Now, if you will just sit here and have some coffee, we'll talk this thing over. Uh, no, thanks. It's getting awful late, and I think I've got a whole lot of chores to do tomorrow. Listen, you ought to see that he gets a lot of rest, because, Senator, you don't look so good. Well, Katie, I don't feel so good. Now, if you would just listen. Good night, Pat. Good night, Senator. Now, don't you forget, y'all come. <laughs> night. Katie. Gene, can't we do something? Once Katie starts rolling, that's it. You got more chance stopping a... Kansas Twister by breathing on it. Gee, there's not another car on the block. She did say over a hundred guests. At least we won't have any trouble getting a parking space. I guess we must be the first. Well, now, that's a, a fair deduction, but on the other hand, using the same facts, we could be the last. You and Uncle Cooter stay in the car. I'll go up and have a look-see. Good evening. Evening. Whom shall I say is calling? Senator Smith. This way, please. <laughs> Senator Smith. Join you? No. Pull up the hunk floor. <laughs> it's quite a shack you got here. I hope you got uh, bus service between all the rooms. Gene, why didn't they come? Well, Katie, it's like I was trying to tell you the other night. This is Washington. People are sent here from all over the United States to help run the country. Everybody wants something from them. So we invite them to parties. And they go to a lot of parties because sometimes they want something that might help the people they represent. But they can't go to all of them. Pat and I just go to half of them and sometimes it seems like we're using our house for a locker room some place to check in and change clothes. Senator, let's scrape off all that varnish and get down to the wood. What you're really trying to say is that Katie McGraw is just small potatoes around here. And all those people that I invited, they wouldn't be caught dead in my house. Not even if I had the Boston Symphony here to play taps. Katie, that's wrong thinking. They're not mean people. They just don't know you. Let's look at it from their side of the fence. Here's a gal comes to town, buys a big house, wants to make a big splash. 
figures that she can buy their friendship for a free meal. They just don't understand that, that you want to be neighborly. Well, maybe. Meantime, I feel like that little kid that wanted to go swimming, and when he got all set to go, the creek had dried up. <laughs> and what am I going to do with all them vittles? Well, Mom used to say never throw the leftovers out, but I don't guess you ever served a meal that was left over before it was started. <laughs> I could call in uh, Pat and Uncle Cooter, but even if they had seconds. Gene, I know just exactly what I'm going to do. All right, men, load them groceries. Come on, Senator, you can help me. Close my eyes Are things I've never had A party dress On my birthday And a doll To make me glad A high school dance a teen romance Are things I've never had Someone to read me fairy tales On the days when it would rain When I'd fall down No one was there To kiss away my pain Someone to call me down When the blues come on real bad each night I pray to find someday the things I've never had. How about you introducing the next number? Everybody having a good time? Yeah! You know, looking at you youngsters remind me of when I was a boy. I was a handful. I was in more hot water than a washcloth. <laughs> Got so bad, I walked into school one morning, and you know what my teacher did? Right off, she made me stand in the corner. I said, Miss Madbury, I ain't done nothing. She says, No, Jean, but you will, and I'm not going to waste five minutes waiting for you. <laughs> well, right at the time, it wasn't so funny to me, but you know what? She made me so mad that I stopped fooling around and started studying. First thing you know, I went into politics, got to be a senator. One day I got to thinking how I'd like to go back to that little country school and have the last laugh on Miss Medbury. You know what happened? I walked into that class out of nowhere, and she just sat there and looked at me over her spectacles, and she said, 
Senator, go stand in the corner. <laughs> By golly, I did, too. Well, enough of this. Let's get on with the entertainment. You know, Katie and Uncle Cooter used to be a singing team on the radio until Uncle Cooter had an untimely accident with his tonsil. He uh, twisted it at a hog calling contest. Well, Uncle Cooter tells me that it's untwisted now, so he and Katie are going to sing a song for you. Wait a minute, Senator. How about making that a trio? What do you say, kids? Hey! Okay, fellas, how about a down? You're my sugar, you're my sugar, you're my sugar, but you're never sweet to me. You're my sugar, you're my sugar, you're my sugar, but you're never sweet to me. Right to the end, old partner, I said I'd be your friend. And I asked you for ten dollars, and you said this is the end. I ordered you some collars, right from the catalog. And now I can't stop barking, cause it's collars for a dog. You're my sugar, you're my sugar, you're my sugar, but you're never sweet to me. You're my sugar, you're my sugar. You're my sugar, but you're never sweet to me. I promised you a pony. I promised you a yacht. Well, a saddle and a paddleboard. Oh, I am a guy. I needed you some golf socks with fine and fancy soles. I guess you'd call them golf socks cause they all had 18 holes. You're my sugar. You're my sugar. You're my sugar, but you're never sweet to me. Why can't we stop this fussing? Why can't we get along? Well, we're only out here fussing so that we can have a song. You're my sugar, you're my sugar, you're my sugar, but you're never sweet to me. You're my sugar, you're my sugar, you're my sugar, but you're never sweet to me. Excuse me, there's a lady here, says she hasn't got an invitation, but she'd like to join the best party in town.